And good afternoon, afternoon, folks. It's another episode of the Gary and Mark Show, and I'm Gary. And I am Mark. And we're coming to you not live. But we are live. And we're sequestered. We are. And Safe distance. Right. And uh, let's show them. Those people on YouTube. Yard can see sticks. This. Double yep. that yard stick. So over Pretty here. Pretty much. Three feet. That's a yard or a meter? That's, that's a yard. That's okay. a yard, 39 inches. In ch- yeah, so, i got to get here a little bit. Okay. Right. We're pretty darn good. We've been wiped down. We we have. And uh, we Take have, our word for, for our YouTube watchers out there, yeah. we have our wipes. And look, we're practicing. We are. Social distancing. We are. And, and we're not joking about we, that. We are not. No, this is serious uh, stuff. We, uh, in fact, debated whether we would broadcast yeah. today or not. Yeah, but we figured you you got to go on with uh we got to go on with our lives and still try and find some fun. Yes, so, but from a distance. From a distance. And you you folks are probably miles away. You probably are cuz we aren't even doing this off our front porch. It's back porch. That's true. We are actually uh, a few miles from Watershed, a few miles from Watershed. Gary's house. We are we are 1.2 miles. Actually probably just one mile as the crow flies from the southern appalachian brewery and we, we better not ta- yeah we're no, just, that's close enough, enough. <laughs> and we're having their signature copperhead ale today and it's good yes it is and so we sure they're they're the first brewery in hendersonville and like a lot of other places right now they're they're closed except you can go pick up your growlers uh and I had to drive up here from where I live, which is not too far from Watershed either, but uh, there was hardly any traffic. No. Nope. And I was actually on the interstate for part of that. Yeah. It's nice being out here on this porch. Nice back deck. Bunch of firewood. You didn't have to use this uh, I don't winter. think I'm going to. I don't think I'm going to have mean, to. I don't know what your temperature here is today, but at home it was 74. Today, uh, yesterday it was in the 70s here. Mm-hmm. It feels like May. feels nice here, though. I'm going to turn on the outside shower. I usually it's, wait old May, but well, I have a spigot outside. But I'm not taking a shower. It's cold water. Yeah, no, this is hot and cold. That's good. And you're I mean, fancy. I can shut it off again if you're have fancy. A big dip. But well, that music. You know what that means? Shout out! Shout time. out time. All you're right, good. all right. So uh, you got one first. I have one. I've got a special one to Donald Burns. Hey, Donald Burns. I hope you hear this. Uh, You are a wonderful human, and I give you a lot of credit for being the father of David Burns, my longtime backpacking buddy, uh, who I worked with at Diamond Brand, oh, starting over 20 years ago. And I was just thinking how this very day, 12 years ago, Donald, your son David and I were making our way from Elkmont through the snow up Mary up to Mary Ridge in the Smokies. Sounds nice. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, Donald. Take care, old friend. My shout out. Yep. Well, uh, not really shout outs, but you know, last time I mentioned that this Lucy liked our security pants episode. Yeah. She also liked our history lesson. Yeah. And we might start adding that in as yeah. a segment. But before we get to that, since we're on the topic of security pants. Yeah. Remember the guy with the puppet theater wants us to do the movie at his place, right? Farm. Yeah. Well, he was suggesting that for the security pants, maybe we should have like models and do a calendar, like you know, <laughs> January wearing one pair and February. Wearing okay, another. I've got so with these models be puppets well, see, that's what he was they, worried he was worried that if we had people cia might get involved i'm not sure why the cia yeah but uh i'm thinking puppets would be very good very in good taste to put a security pants on a puppet right yeah versus we'd have to find 12 guys right who would well, be well you know these could be for women couldn't they too well, well, that'd be fun. Let's find don't they, some. Don't they we some. could go hunt for models. Would you <laughs> yeah. mind modeling our security pants? Yeah, the only issue Boy, is. Boy, that'd be a line, wouldn't it? Hi. That's I'm true. from the Gary and Mark <laughs> show, and uh, you seem like you'd be perfect to model our security pants. That's. It, yeah. Yeah. How well, would you like to get into Afghanistan <laughs> or no, South America? Well, the problem okay. is, 
We don't have 12 pair yet. No, we don't. So we might have to think about a Kickstarter campaign. How but many I, continents are there? There's seven continents. Well, that's a week. There that, you that's go. That's a week. So we could do a weekly calendar. A maybe. weekly calendar. <laughs> you just repeat them, I guess. But I'm thinking, since, you know, normally you've seen Kickstarter, right? Uh, Those campaigns. Kind of, well, sort you know, of. People can yeah. donate money. Shark and you, right, Well, well this yeah, this is yeah. on the internet. And oh, they, yeah, they I have do, seen. They do on these, Facebook. I yeah, think. and they yeah. do these classy videos yeah. to get people, and they have a prototype. Right. So what we need to do is go to the drugstore, yeah. pick up some Depend. If they have any. That's true. All right. But we'll find some somewhere. Yeah. And since your wife, Barbara, is a professional artist. Oh, yeah. We can let her decorate you, some of them. You think she'll you do that? you turn this pair into North America? There you go. Kenya. Yeah. There we go. And then we can start a Kickstarter campaign. Yeah. Because we need some money to put, put these into the stores. And it, yeah. Yeah. And then the, it would be a, a, the calendar like Mr. July. Uh-huh. Mrs. August. I'm telling you. And her security. We, and we could raise money with that. If, yeah. Yeah. Mike. There you go. You know, things, Kickstarter, actually, if it doesn't reach its goal, you have to give the money back. So we can set a low goal, like $200. Uh-huh. We'd probably get that. Then we get to keep it whether we ever do any pants or not. Well, you just buy growlers. I like that there idea. There you go. Probably Put would. Put the security <laughs> pants on the outside of a growler. Yeah, you know, and that works because that, you know, it's that shape, leaking or sort of. mm-hmm. there's like an idea. idea. Yeah. See? Well, you know, this episode, which is 28, yeah. should be posting on April Fool's Day. April 1. April 1. And we've got some events in history, but before we get to that, mm-hmm. have you ever had any childhood trauma, Gary? Did you remember? Uh, yeah. Probably you don't want to talk about it, though, do you? Well, actually, oh, one, good. you really... Uh, when I was six and we're at my cousin's in Texas and I'd been playing outside this is up in the panhandle, I'm sure it was pretty hot. I was dehydrated, but I got the cramps and my mother and my aunt put me in a bathtub of water cause they were concerned. It was, this was polio epidemic. They were concerned I had polio and, uh, Goodness. I think that was probably more traumatic for them than for me because I didn't realize the depth of their concern at the I time. I bet so, yeah. So, wow. In a way, that's kind of, I guess, with what's going on now. Yeah. That was, that was like 1955, probably. Well, my trauma would have been 1952 uh, and actually affected my mom more than me. But when I was born, true story, the doctor delivered me, looked at my head, and looked at my butt <laughs> and told my mom, oh, look, you've got twins. <laughs> oh, True no. story. No. That's, that's what she told me. Oh, man. So she broke into tears, and everybody was just upset at that doctor. Yeah. From that point on, don't know the names I've been called. Well. Yeah, Butthead's one, I guess. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, that's, but, a not, yeah, well. That's, a, that's not a bad name. No. No. You got any things from history from April 1? Well, I do. About? Here Just you go. Let's take it way back. Way back. Want to go way back. Why not? I mean. We'll do some way back music, okay, too. Okay, got some way back. <laughs> we got it coming. Here you go. How about, let's go back to 527. Man, uh, that's a. That's a long way back. Justinianus became the emperor of Byzantium. You know what? And I wouldn't know either one of those pers- people or places. Well, that's Eastern Roman Empire, well, good for right? Is it yeah, Constantinople or, yeah. I've heard of that. Which is a mighty long word, as yeah. John Bryan says. <laughs> right. Has three more letters than Mockingbird. <laughs> Put me on the morning train. Okay, here. How about this for 1621? We'll move right along. Plymouth, Massachusetts colony created first treaty with Native Americans. That didn't go well, did it? April 1, yeah, they yeah, kind of... how about that? Yeah. That was a uh, good timing. Yeah. 1854. Remember, moving up to modern day. Yeah. Charles Dickens begins the serialization of his novel, Hard Times, in his magazine, Household Worlds. Okay. Hard Times. And you know what? Charles Dickens' great-great-grandson came to Asheville one time to do a thing at the school I used to work. Really? And to him, he was famous because of that. And I'm saying, yeah. you're not famous because of that. He's famous. But he came all dressed up and yeah. interesting. 
I'm sure charge good money. Well, if you can kind of ride that one out. I, get, I was not all that impressed, yeah. but other people were. All right, now let's move up to 2004. That's not long ago. On this, on April 1, 2004, Google announces Gmail to the public. Wow. 2004. Uh-huh. That is, what, 16 years ago. I still remember the very first email I ever sent. What, you know what it was? I, I, I don't remember much about the content, but I do remember the res- I sent it to David Bell, Frank Jr.'s son, David. He was, I think, I forget if he was on the Chinese mainland or in Taiwan at the time, and I sent him an email. This first one, I did it from Diamond Brand. Somebody helped show me how to do it. Did you get a response? Oh, yeah. Soon or days right, later? Yeah, pretty pretty soon. I remember. I don't remember what the first one was I sent or received, but I was excited to get it. And it was like I'm begging for email. Now it's like, please, I don't want any more email. <laughs> However, if our guests want to email us, yes. Gary and Mark show at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Sure, we would. We're hearing from people almost every single we month are. Now, yes. We are. I'd like to know how you're doing, how you're kind of riding out the, uh, the virus. That's true. Hopefully you're listening at home. And by the way, if you go to our website, we have something new, Gary. Oh, the, show that. There show it that. is. G N M P U, the Gary and Mark Podcasting University decal for your decal. car or that, anywhere you want to put look, it. That would look nice on your coffee mug. That's right. On your car, everything. Yep, on your, your diploma. On your pet, it would. It look good on your pet. It would. So you get these like everything else yeah. at Gary and Mark dot com. Uh huh. Uh, and so they're available now, along with the Rabbit Island stickers. Yeah. Well, we uh, we might be in. For a treat. Yeah. Because we're going to try to get the mayor of okay. Watershed on. All right. Let's do that. We're going to take just a quick break while okay, we Okay. Uh, let's take a break. We're going to try to get him. May, may not be lucky, but we're going to see. Be right back. And we think we are back. Are hey, we there? We are. We're back. So we have a guest online. Yeah, we do. We've tried to get up with this person for a long time. Mm-hmm. It has not been easy. We are bringing to our guest the mayor of Watershed. Are we not happy about that? Yes, we are. Oh, the crowd goes wild. The crowd does go They're wild. They're six feet away at least. So, uh, Mayor Thomas, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much, good old boys. It's good to finally be here. We're uh, we're trying to stay healthy and safe. How about you? Well, you know, we, we've been discussing that. We are the same. Gary and I are actually, yeah, you'll see it on the video maybe, but we're almost six feet apart. Yeah, we're, we're almost <laughs> two yardsticks from each other. Yeah. So uh, we well, just... We've, uh... Everybody in town is doing their best. Well, that's what we wanted to find out because yeah. we, we get through, you know, watersheds are home base, but we, we don't live there necessarily. We just go down there to yeah. uh, broadcast sometimes. And, and just drop their name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People in watershed like that because there's not a lot of people. But uh, so what is happening down there these days? Well, you know, everybody's doing their best and it's, it's a struggle. It is. It's a struggle. We're, you know, the local area businesses are doing their best to be creative. Uh, nobody's allowing more than five people to gather at a time. I think most people are being very respectful of, of keeping their distance. I've noticed a lot of people bumping elbows as opposed to shaking hands. Uh, we're trying to uh, we're trying to make sure everybody stays healthy. You know, there's no reported cases yet here in the county, and we're trying to keep it that way. Well, that's good. No, well, I heard one guy say Uh-oh. that he said, well, no, nothing ever comes to watershed. So why would the virus show up? And then, <laughs> well, since the news we, came out, you know that Tom Brady's not Tom Brady's not coming to watershed. Harry right. and Megan aren't coming to watershed. Gosh, yeah. We we were disappointed about Mr. Brady. We had reserved him a suite at the local B and D. We had uh, we had filled it with sports memorabilia. And we have, we were holding it for him, but yeah. you know, Tampa Bay. What are you going to do? What are well, you going to do now? I don't know what we do with none of them royal people, uh, so we wouldn't know what to do with them here if they showed up. But everybody's welcome. Everybody's welcome. Well, that's that's good to hear. And you know, you mentioned that crowds of no more than five, but in Watershed, that's probably 
ten percent of the population. Well, here's another. Well, technically, technically speaking, we are seven hundred and fifty-two people. Okay, Ooh. I wonder. And that's that's if that's if you count the two that were born over the summer. Okay, so the other thing I heard is there's no need the closest dollar store. There's no need for the first hour to be just for seniors because basically almost everybody that lives there is a senior. So good point. Well, so. We, we, no one has accused us of having a younger population. Uh-huh. We, uh, we well, pride ourselves by wisdom, wisdom and by remembering in detail all of the events of the great war. Uh-huh. There you go. And the, the great war, we're talking world war one. Oh, well, it, you know, really, if you study your history, oh. Gary and Mark, and, and World Gary War I is, is really just the first part of World War II. So I have. And, we, yeah. we think of the Great War as the combination of the two of them. And uh, yeah. we have a, have a few grave sites here in town for some of the veterans that did pass during those wars. But uh, we, we average, uh, I think, the last time we paid attention to a census, uh, if you're 72.3 years old, you're you're just about right smack dab in the middle. Wow. Okay. Well, then I'd we're, be we're, uh, <laughs> I'd still be almost a kid. I'm only 70. Yeah. I'd be like a teenager. But you know, it's you young and you know we got to yeah. keep an eye on you young. Yeah. Yeah, uh huh. So let me ask you, Mayor Thomas, is is Thomas your first name or your last name? It's both and neither. Now, what does that mean? Uh, my mama, my mama named me. My my daddy's last name was Thomas. And I've been mayor so long, nobody cares to remember. Uh huh. Now, are you up for election this November, or is you already in? Well, for life? here's here's how that's working. Now, we have an election. We have uh, we have a few posts here in town that do occasionally change. We've got four town commissioners uh, that I work with to make sure that the streets are paved and the water's flowing. That's important. Uh, but uh, take nobody run against me in such a long time uh, that we stopped putting my name on the ballot <laughs> because it's just a waste of ink. And uh, we don't like to waste the taxpayers' money because, you point. know, we have almost $157 in the city till. Whoa. And uh, we like to save that for coffee and Danish. I like that. Yeah. I like that. You, you've been in longer. You'll be in longer <laughs> than Putin. <laughs> well, I like to think that I've murdered fewer people than uh, Mr. Putin. Well, and, and I will tell you, we've got about nine listeners from Russia, Uh-oh. but they probably don't speak English, so well, we're probably okay. Yeah. And that's true. Yeah. Oh, so that. We, so, we try very hard here in town not to murder nobody. It's, it's, uh, it's been going on a couple decades since we felt the need to do that. That's kind of a sort of a golden rule. In a way, yeah. in a well, yeah. If, if if you don't want to be murdered, then don't murder nobody. I think uh, that's, that's a, a good philosophy. Yeah. On the golden rule, yeah. yeah. Y'all should put that on your sign. Welcome to Watershed. <laughs> yeah. If you don't want to be murdered, don't murder anybody. There or you whatever, go. Something like that. You no, know, that's a darn good idea. I'll have to talk to the commissioners about that. Yeah, okay. license plate and everything on the front yeah. of the car. <laughs> yeah, I like that idea. Well, now North Carolina. The state of North Carolina does like to maintain control of the license plates. But see, on the front, they don't have one. So well, no, that's true. You're that's right. True. We do have. You know, our favorite one here in town is, I weren't born here, but I got here as fast as I could. I like that. That's pretty good. And that is a good philosophy, yeah. too. Well, let me ask you, because you, you, is... you can get that right on Main Street. Well, let me ask you, speaking of Main Street, this could be a scandal. And I mentioned it to you a while back. But we heard there's a tattoo parlor might want to come to town. <laughs> and I know we're, Watershed needs some businesses, but are you for <laughs> that or are you against that? Well, we don't like to encourage the young people to disgrace the flesh of their bodies. <laughs> wow. Now, some of our veterans do carry the scars of war. That's true. And some of those, some of those scars are in the shape of their mother's pictures. And, uh, some have anchors, and some have things that are just downright unrecognizable. We think they were drunk. Um, <laughs> you mean the we, tattoo the artist or the... Auxiliary club, the ladies auxiliary club and the ladies garden club and the ladies single club 
have all spoken out strongly and firmly uh, against the arrival of the tattoo parlor. Mm. And the last time anybody went against the ladies auxiliary club Uh-oh. was that a couple decades ago, I mentioned to you last time somebody was murdered. Woo. Whoa, man. Don't mess with the women. No. Yeah. That, this is the, this is exactly the wisdom that now that right there, that ought to be on the license plate. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we interviewed, a lady motorcycle rider several episodes ago from Hendersonville. And Mm -hmm. we asked her because there was a ladies motorcycle gang in watershed called the wicked women of watershed called themselves the W three. Are they still around? We have not. uh, I do not personally know these women, uh, but I have heard of them and they have a sterling reputation. Uh, as uh, being generous to the charities in town, well, good. Uh, they very graciously agreed to uh, to have mufflers added to their uh, hogs when they're in town, so they don't make quite as much noise. And uh, they agreed to stop beating up the local men as long as the local men behave themselves. Well, so we think... we appreciate them, and uh, we we uh, we welcome them here like everybody else. Well, I'm telling you what, this is all good news from Watershed today. It is. Today. I, if the leadership throughout the country were as good as what I'm hearing from Watershed, I'm telling you. Imagine. I'm telling you. This is. We would set. We would be a model. We, yeah, a model of citizenship. Yeah, whether and leadership. Thomas is your first name or your last name. It's. It. I go by. I go by T T. I go by T Thomas. I go by Thomas T. Uh, mostly, it's just nice to stick with Mayor. I like well, that. you know, and it's my middle name. What? Thomas. Oh, Thomas. Thought you meant yeah. Mayor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Mayor Thomas, it has been great talking with you. We'll look for gentlemen. To- it's been a pleasure. We consider your co- your podcast. Excuse me there for a second. There, I almost slipped up. We consider your podcast to be a blessing and uh, a wonderful addition to the things happening here in our town. Well, that's we appreciate that. We, uh, yeah. There's probably only a broadcast coming out of yeah. Watershed, yeah. so that's good. And as soon as we get this virus thing cleared up, we hope to see more of you. Okay. That'll be you mean more like in person, but not more of us like shirts off, right? <laughs> or like our bikini page. That's not yeah. yeah. All right. Well, yeah, Mayor, see you more often. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, Mayor Thomas, so thanks so much for talking with us. We want to talk with you again on future yep. shows. We look forward to it, man. You have a good day. You too. Take care, Mayor. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Well. Hello, hello. Yeah, so you need to see if you can call him now. Okay, well, let's try and call up our legal counsel, Joseph Nathan Clark. We need some legal counsel. We do. You know, because, uh, well, we're having, uh, you know, school. We're having a problem with the university since all the schools are closed. It seems like it puts us on the same level as major colleges around the country. Well, that's true. And, you know, and our students have always been learning at home. That's right. So you got. Here we go. Okay. Let's see if we can get our legal counsel. Hello. Hello. Is this Joe Clark? Uh, last time I checked, yes. It sounds like them. Is this, are yep. you the legal counsel for the Gary and Mark Podcasting University, as well as the legal counsel for Rabbit Island Resorts? Yes, I am. Ah, uh, how are you, Joe? This is Mark on this side. Hey, Mark. Glad I'm to hear fine. from you. Yes. What's and you're more than there? six feet away from us. So, oh, we're, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we are so. practicing social distancing. Yeah. So, Gary, yeah. you, you know, you've heard us mention Rabbit Island. You know, we've talked to you about some legal issues. So, Gary has a question he wanted to ask and see what you think All as right. a legal counsel. You are, just for people know, you are a real lawyer, semi-retired, <laughs> okay? But you passed yes. the bar, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, in, in a regular state, not like in a foreign country somewhere, right? Yeah, as long as you consider Tennessee a regular state. Well, yeah. Most times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And... And and we might add that the three of us all worked together. That's true. At Camp Mondam in years ago. 70s. We did. We during, did. During the early days when Rabbit Island, the idea of it being a resort, when it was just a dream. Yeah. It yeah. was. It was. 
I remember when they put in the first uh, international runway over there. Ah, it was so, tight. It was tight. It was tight. Yeah, it was tight. Had to be but kind of small. The, uh, yeah, a little bitty plane. Yeah, yeah. Frank used to fly into that. Yeah, oh, yeah. The director. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. With all the stuff that's going on now, Joe, we're mm-hmm. we're talking about maybe another angle we can boast that come visit Rabbit Island because we're virus free. Yes. yes. I, I mean, uh, we can do that, can't we? Is that uh, that wouldn't be false advertising? I mean, there's hardly anything there. Uh, I mean, other than no. That. Well, that's that's what I've always heard. That, yeah. Uh, Rabbit Island is immune from anything. Yeah, and, uh, that's a good point. And uh, I did hear this morning on the news that um, that uh, no one on Rabbit Island had tested positive and no one had died. Let's see. I expect that to continue. Well, there you go. Uh, you know, guys, we could put that on a license plate. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Welcome to that's Rabbit right. Island. No one has died here. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, Joe, we're wondering when you might be able to – to come down and, uh, and and be, you know, on one of our podcasts with us. And just to point out, we are more than six feet oh, yeah. from each other. at the, So maybe in a few months, if and when this thing blows over, you can uh, come and join us at the table. I'd love to. I'd love to. Yeah. And so I, I do have another legal question, though, while you're on the line, Joe, since sure. I know we pay by the hour. Might as well get it all in the hour. That's right. <laughs> Same Clock's hour. Clock's running. Yeah. So Gary and I and the, the Gary and Mark show, try, we're always trying to raise money. Mm-hmm. So we thought of starting the Watershed Orphans Fund because Gary is an orphan, theoretically, and I am, right? Gary? Yeah. yeah. I bet so, Joe is, too. Probably. So I believe I am. Can you, we get by with that? If the money went to us because we're orphans? Are we on the air right now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> but, but this will, this will, uh, uh, it won't post April 1st. April but, uh, 1. Yeah. But, yeah. So, mm-hmm. uh, so can, is oh, that legal? I see. Uh, what, to raise money? As mean, orphans. Uh, yeah, for orphans. But we're the orphans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's not mm-hmm. sounding very good. Uh, mm. <laughs> this is something you need to look up. When's the last time you practiced law? I guess we ought to ask that. And you know, we're, this is North Carolina, not not Tennessee, so it may make a difference. Well, yeah. actually, our uh, yeah, our legal systems are very similar, actually, because we got ours from you. Ah, but well, that uh, may not be a good thing. But that well, sounds like yeah. a good slogan too. <laughs> we got ours from you. <laughs> from you, that's yeah. right. <laughs> That'd be a good one for Rabbit Island too. You could flip well, the plate over and clear on the back okay. side. Yeah. So uh, let's see. I, I think I'd, I'd I'd tend to stay away from that, boys. I think you're doing fine, and you're you're on your way to making your first million. And just you with helped this podcast us, Podcast University. Yeah, and he did help us. He Joe, did. Joe help was us a big donor. He was a huge donor. We need to send him a G and M P U decal. We at do. least several. We have a new decal it's on our oh, website, and you'll see it. I got one here somewhere. Yeah, we will send you some of these. Oh, oh yeah, well, I'm holding it. He can't see it. He can't see it. <laughs> All right. Well, you're going to see it. There's a video. Of you'll this. see it April out. one. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well. Uh, oh, yeah. Hey. So what are you doing? How are you uh, managing uh, these days with this sequestering and all? Well, being over 60, I have, uh, you know, put a little self-imposed quarantine on myself now, but I am getting out Yeah. once in a while, you know, we have to go to get the mail, go get toilet paper and all the other necessities. Wait a second. You said toilet paper. Yes. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> My wife scored about four rolls yesterday morning. She went out at about seven thirty and went to the local Kroger. And for some reason, the stars were all aligned and. Wow. She was able to find about four or five rolls there. Well, so you know, my, my my brother-in-law up in Boston, no toilet paper. Really? Yeah. I mean. Really? Yeah. I, I went to Ingalls a few days ago. They did not have any. They had really? it the other day. But they I'm, had it today. They had some. I'm trying not to go to the store very often or go at night when not many people are there. But, you know, there's this. A long distance hiker who makes a living now. Oh, he takes hunters on deep backpacking trips to bag all kinds of, I guess, animals. And he also mm-hmm. he 
he hiked the AT many years ago. He's got his own YouTube video, and, you know, he rations himself. I forget if it's two or four squares a day. You know, that's <laughs> – I mean, I understand trying to save toilet paper, but I, that would not get me very far. Well, he, he starts initially, and we won't get to – but – after you've kind of finished, before you start the cleanup, rocks or sticks? How about that? That helps. He went to Duke. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, if you're on a twenty-one hundred mile hike, you've got to, You'd have to have a lot. I know you can restock. But yeah, I can see conserving it. But that's uh, that's pretty extreme. Well, I saw what a former governor of Arkansas, uh, who's uh, oh heck, I can't think of his name now. Not Clinton, the other former governor. Mike Huckabee. Huckabee. Huckabee, yeah. Talking about corn cobs. Just you know, eat more <laughs> corn. Yeah. <laughs> Got corn cobs. Yeah. This virus would strike, you know, just after the Sears catalog and phone books go out of style. That, but... I, I did see a cartoon on y- you know the internet the other day yeah. where they were saying it had all those C V S coupons. You had to get a million of them. They had them on a total oh, yeah, yeah. and said finally a good use for all those coupons. <laughs> They're so thinking, thin, though. And well, they, you know, yeah. yeah, but one sheet of toilet paper would be pretty thin, too. So. Yeah. Yeah, but maybe they could switch the formula of the paper. Yeah. But, Joe, any so other legal gonna... advice you can give us before we hang up with you? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, well, for you two in particular, I'm trying to think of what I would tell you. No, we don't want to get uh, in trouble. I know, I know. I, I'll have to think about that a little okay. while. Okay. Well, it's been the... great having yeah. you on the show. It has been. It has been. Yeah. And we will look forward to having you back again. Like Gary said, love to have you come down here to Watershed. Yeah, or All one right. of these days we rendezvous again for a hike somewhere. That sounds good to me. We'll have to do that. As long as we stay six feet apart. That's right. That's yeah. right. Big That'd Creek. Go back to Big easy, Creek. Easy hike for me. <laughs> All right, Joe. Great talking All right, with guys. You. Take care. Take care. Appreciate your Talk legal later. advice. Yes. All right. I feel All right. safe. I do, too. Bye, Joe. Bye-bye. Hey, folks, it's the Gary and Mark Pod show. Yes. Yeah, yeah, podcast. Well, and yeah. Um, we, we took a short break. They may did. not know that, except there will be a little pause in the morning. Yeah. So well, uh, we brought a, a, my, another guest on. This another a, guest. a big day for us. Yes. Introduce this guest, Gary. This is Frank Tompkins Shell, who... Probably is. Was he the guy who recruited you for Mind Damon? No. No. Oh. But I was there when he was there. Well, he's the guy. He was my first face for Mind Damon. That would have been February of 1969. Wow. And yeah. I came in 71. So that's, we're talking over 50 years ago. So how are you, Frank? I'm very good. Thank you, Gary and Mark. Uh, and where are you right now? I don't even know where you are. We are in North Alabama at a place called Red Bay, Alabama. So are you still living out of an RV? Yes, sir. We 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 call it a double wide with a motor. Yeah. <laughs> I hear it's like a land yacht. Well, so what, it's pretty nice. I had to sell everything I had. Done. We don't have a house. Really? So that's your house? Yeah. Yes, it, it moves from time to time. It's at the factory right now. We're getting some warranty work done on it currently. So how, how long is this thing? I'm just curious. Uh, this one is 41 feet. And so that motor coach used to drive at Globe Tracks. How long was it? That was uh, 42, I think. Okay, About the so same. you're used to that kind of stuff. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Does your wife ever drive it? No, not yet. She's threatened to, but I'm kind of scared. <laughs> Do you still have that pink poodle? Yes, we still have the little poodle. It's at the uh, grandchildren's place right now, but before I die, I hope we get it back. <laughs> oh, they're trying to take it from you, huh? <laughs> yes, they are, buddy. It's painful. So, northern Alabama... You got, you, you got a place up there to play pickleball, or are you? Uh... No, I just left Jacksonville about a week ago, and I played pickleball all winter in Jacksonville, uh-huh. Florida. 
Yeah. And five or six days a week, two, three hours a day, oh, I wow. was in heaven. Yeah, I hear Gary. You. Gary and Mark, pickleball is the greatest thing ever happened to an old person. Well, I mean, don't some young people play it, though? They do. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's definitely going to younger ages, but it all, it started, you know, for older adults when really the seniors have taken over it. But there's some ex-tennis college players and pros that have, turn pickleball into a real real sport now well and i hear you're like a champion yeah well i got a bucket full of medals but they anywhere from arizona to florida to where well, three or four other states that i played in in some national tournaments but wow. it's a, it's a wonderful wonderful sport and it's uh it's just good health. It's good for my health. I'm healthy at this point. The wife is too. We may die of something in the next three or four weeks. No, don't say it's, that. Yeah. Okay. So you put these medals next to your Snead Junior College tennis trophies? No, I don't know where those trophies yeah. are, Gary. Yeah. I think I think they went away. I don't. Mm. Where was that college? Snead Junior College. Where is that? He'd have to tell that's, you somewhere in Alabama. That's in Boaz, Boaz, Alabama, North Alabama. I went to school with a guy named Charlie Charles Tucker. Francis Tucker. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh! Yeah. You went to school yes. with him? Yes. Yeah. Uh, he used to take riding lessons when he was a young boy from my mother, and we became friends, and then. Charlie, we took Charlie to camp. And the rest yeah, is history. That's right. Yeah. We, and we need to get Charlie on this show, we too. We do. We need. We just talked to Joe Clark earlier today. Yeah. Well, speak, say hello to him. You yeah. know how he got to camp. Yep. Why, via Frank Shelton? University of Tennessee. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. He was my roommate for two years. Oh, my and gosh. I, See, I didn't know any of this I, stuff. I, yeah. Yes, and I got him, talked him into going, and I, Gary, did he stay there for four or five summers let's see i can tell you his first year was 68 and i think he was there five years his last year was 73 yeah yes. five five summers yes sir he was my roommate in the tawanda tawanda hilton, hilton i remember <laughs> and burt weasel oh my god <laughs> and and then your brother tim Yes, my brother Tim's alive and well in Wyoming. Yep. And retired from being a farmer, but he's doing well. Well, you know, Tim I knew before Frank because Tim, maybe it was a brief time, I don't know, went to UNC Chapel Hill because he was in a class with me. Huh. Did you know that, Frank? Yes, I think I knew that. I mean, we didn't Tim know each other. I, what? I had signed a contract to go to Mondamon, and sitting on uh, next to me was Tim. I didn't know Tim, but on his notebook, he had written Camp Mondamon or something. And I said, Mondamon, I'm going there. And that's how the conversation started. You know, I'll bet he was there the same time John Burton was getting his MBA or John Burton was down there somewhere because they, they were training together, I bet, on their C2 I would. Yes, they were yeah. training for the nationals and other races. I'm yeah. not sure of the timing there, but you will never meet another guy like Tim. He's the only guy that I know that went to four universities and majored in pre vet or pre med, never graduated from any of them, and on the dean's list of all of them. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. He was a smart boy, but yeah. then he ended up on a piece of dirt out in the desert in Wyoming and raised horse hay for 30 years. And yeah. uh, didn't he work for the government once flying his plane over searching for bear or something like that? Yes, he still does that. Uh, he has contracts to for the Park Service, Forest Service, and the wildlife people to go over and count bears over the Yellowstone National Park, huh. et cetera. And I, how I knew that was, yeah. you know, I take these kids out west every so often, and we were in Dubois, where yeah. Tim lives near, I guess, maybe still lives there, I don't know. 
And yes. the motel we stayed in, Stagecoach Motor Inn, I just yes. kind of mentioned, you know, Tim Shell, and they said, oh, yeah, yeah it works for the Fed, you know, and he talked yeah. about this thing. So you ever, yes. been, you know where that motel is? Yes, I know exactly where it is. I mean, Dubois is not the world's biggest place. There's another person that lives in Dubois, Gary Murdoch. Oh, Robert Murdoch. Robert Murdoch has a restaurant in uh, Dubois for 25 or 30 years and two more restaurants in Wyoming. Huh. Goodness. And uh, Robert's, parent, Robert's daddy used to babysit the three of us in Auburn. Wow. That's how he got to camp. Mm. Small world. Hey, and, <laughs> and by is. the way, I saw... Johnny Burton the other day because he'd come to Pardee to get checked up after his he had hip replacement about oh a month ago and of course he has had amazing recovery he's in very good shape and you know Gary had yeah. that too did you know that Frank well mine was a year yeah so yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 you got any good. you got any artificial parts Frank <laughs> that you want to talk about <laughs> <laughs> nothing I want to talk about okay my, everything else my brain's getting smaller i'm a little slower than i used to be yeah well you're not even 70 years old yet oh right i'm 73 are you yeah you're yeah. older than gary yeah, yeah. oh yeah but, my, but bobby yes. is older than you so yes yeah. please give my regards to barbara and bobby all right. okay and, and you all are uh, are still married and that's a good thing yeah it's pretty amazing actually oh. Yeah, and, and, and hey to Melody there. And by the way, I tell you who else just retired, uh, lives up in uh, North Asheville now, are Tom and Libus Haggerty. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, Gary they've just been saw married. Yeah. They've been married a long, long time. Yep. Yep. All wow. right. Well, Frank, it's been good talking with you. Next yeah. time we get you on the line, we want you to propose to us your ideas of a tour program, bus tours for Rabbit Island Rabbit, Resort. Yeah, yeah. So. Yes, I I want to push that because I think that is a potential wonderful resort destination. Yeah. And there aren't many tours don't go there often. No, so. it's kind of a secret. So yeah. well, it is, and but it's a, a good place to uh, stay away and uh, stay out of the mainstream. That, right, you know, and right, we were just talking there's not been a, a case at all no of J joe clark said we could make the argument that it's virus free since no one has ever died there from the virus that's true so that's a good thing we wanted his legal advice on that yeah yeah yes i think that destination would become very popular particularly going off of chief's dock yeah over there. that'd be mm. a good view good way to approach yeah. i like yes. that yes well, you yeah. put together some thoughts for that, and yeah. we're, we're going okay. to we'll get you on the line again sometime soon. But it's been great uh, talking with you. You too, buddy. Thank you for your time, and uh, the bonus check is being mailed tomorrow. Oh well, boy, good. we'll wait, we'll All hold right. your breath on that one. Yeah, we we, we are not a five hundred one c three. Want to make sure you no. understand that. So uh, okay, uh, Joe Clark. I'm off. Yeah. I've also been told it's being mailed by Pony Express. So oh, we're used to that. Yeah. So, and if you, <laughs> if you have an address where we can mail things to you, that beautiful land yacht of yours, would, it would look really nice with a Rabbit Island Resort decal on it, as well as a Gary and Mark right. Podcasting University Absolutely. decal. We'll send them oh. your way. Imagine what that would do for the value of your coach. And you could be driving all over the country showing yeah. everybody. Yeah. Yes, uh, that would be outstanding. I just hope we get some more Mondam and Green Cove alumni on the hook. Well, you, you need to call Frank Jr. and tell him to, do, to get Andrew to promote this show on that website. I, we talk I, about camp all the time. I know that. I think we should do that. I, I will take that project on. Perfect. All right, All right Frank. It don't, uh, you're going to – don't tell us your address right now because you're on the air. Yeah. Uh, but you're going to send that to Gary, and we will send you some decals. Yeah. Okay. Thank right. you. Thank you. Fun talking with you, you, Frank. Take okay, care. Okay, boys. Enjoy. Bye-bye. Yeah. Be safe. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, so Gary, we are still on the air here. 
And uh, yeah, we're we going to wrap. This has been a okay. good, good show. Yeah. We've covered so, a lot of stuff. We, we've had a lot of people. So we had the mayor of Watershed on. Yeah. Our legal counsel. Our legal counsel. And then good old friend, Frank yep. Shell on. Frank Shell. And uh, so it's been a great episode. We are still social distancing from each other. Yes, we are. We uh, hope when we come to you again, maybe, maybe this thing will be on the downside. All right. So Flat don't forget to uh, like us, yeah. share us, and tell your friends and uh, all that kind of good stuff. Yep. Yeah. Anything else? Subscribe. All no, those things. Yeah. That's about it. Take care. Been a good episode. I'm Mark. I'm Gary. And we'll see you in the next episode. This is Mark. We'd like to thank you for listening to episode 28 of the Gary and Mark Show. Thanks to our sponsors, Saluda Outfitters, home of Green River Eddie's Tap Room, L.J. Myers and his Homeward Angels Professional White Dove Releases. And of course, Rabbit Island Resort and the Big Wiz Pocket Buddy. We'll look forward to having you with us next time.